All right, so grab a coffee or tea or water, whatever it is you like to drink, vodka, don't really care. Uh, Just sit back and let's learn together how to create a chart in HTML. I had this question because I'm working on something personally that I was wanting to display some data via a chart and I didn't really know the best way to do that or a good free way to do that. And so I stumbled upon this chart.js library and uh, I thought, well, why not make a video on it? And we can learn this together. That's what this is. We're going to start off with a small little chart in this video and then I think we're going to try other charts and look at different options and stuff and future videos. So this might be like a mini series. So stay tuned if you like this kind of stuff. And if you do like this kind of stuff, uh, here's the channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I really appreciate all the subscribers recently. And it's just me as I learn new things in coding and programming, uh, coming on here and just sharing them with you. I'm no expert by any means, but I hope that we can, you know, get better at this together and that's basically all this is. And this is apparently my 151st video. So kind of neat. But this is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using chart.js. It's a simple yet flexible JavaScript charting for designers and developers. And what I'd like to do in this video is let's just create a bar chart. And I was thinking of a good data set to use so that this could be fun. And uh, I thought, what about McDonald's? cheeseburger calorie count or different burgers that they offer at mcdonald's now this is the american menu so if you're watching this elsewhere you're probably like what what are some of these things um but maybe you do have these i don't know but this is the calories of our burgers over here and i thought maybe we could use some of these burgers grab their calories and then we could chart them out so you can visualize how much more calories is one burger than another and maybe you're thinking well i want the healthiest burger if that is a thing Uh, Maybe I'm going to choose the one with the least calories. You can look at a chart to help you decide. I'll have some links down below in the description um, for this chart.js.org and the installation. If you want to use Node Package Manager, you can, but we're just going to use CDN and link it in a script at the top of our HTML. Um, You might have seen that similarly done with Bootstrap and uh, I'm just going to avoid using Node Package Manager, at least for now, maybe we'll delve into that, make a quick video on how to do that as well. But I thought CDN would be easiest. And I'll also try to remember to link this. This These are all the different CDN paths. Um, So you can get the min version of some of these, or well, this is the min, but I'm just going to use this one right here, this 3.6.0 slash chart.js. So that's uh, the intro, I guess, to this. And I just have a new directory in my documents where I'm just going to um, start working. And VS Code is my editor of choice. And let's just go ahead and create a new HTML doc. And I'm just going to call it chart.html. Let me try to zoom in. I need to remember I'll do this. There we go. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to bring in um, chart.js and I'm going to say script, and then source is going to be that CDN path that we looked at. So let me bring it back over. I'm just going to, uh, I guess you could copy the script tag here. Maybe, let's try that. I didn't I didn't know this, I was there. So let's just get rid of this now and paste in what they gave us. They seem to give us more properties here. Um, that's okay. I'll just keep it how it is. And then next, we need somewhere for our chart to live. So theoretically, you would probably have some different stuff already on this HTML document, like some text or, I don't know, uh, something. And then you would have the actual chart placed somewhere in this document as well. So we need to define where do we want this chart to live. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a div, and if you want, you can add some styling, and you can say, uh, what's the width? I'm just going to make this 900 for now, 900 pixels. And then the height, I'll just make 400. And you can play around with these as you get data in here. And as you, you know, if your bar graph has uh, more bars, you might want to make the width larger and, and so on and so forth. But I'm just going to keep it like this for now. And then inside of this div, I'm going to do a canvas and give it some kind of arbitrary ID. So I'm just going to name it my chart like that. But you can name it whatever you want. Okay, so that's where our chart's going to live. Now we need to start another JavaScript script down here. 
and let's get to defining how this chart is going to look. What's the data inside of this chart? What are the labels of this chart? What's the colors? All that good stuff. Um, this is going to be pretty basic, like I said, but maybe we'll explore more options in future videos. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data object, which is going to hold a lot of info about our, our chart and its data. Um, so let's say constant data is going to equal to this object. And the first thing I'm going to say is here are the labels of this chart. But right now I'm going to leave it blank because above this we're going to create an array that's going to hold the different labels. So I'll leave that blank till we create that and give it a name. And besides labels we also want data sets. So this is also an array of objects, and in our case, we're just going to have one data set, so it's going to be one object, but you could have multiple data sets if you would like to. But we're going to keep it simple and um, just have one. And so one of the properties in this object is the data of this data set. And something else you can define is what's a background color. And this is going to take a RGB value. So I'm going to go out of Google. And I'm just going to search RGB color picker, and this will help you get the RGB value of any color you like. So this is what color do we want our bars to be? And I really like this color right here. So I'm just going to copy this RGB value, these three numbers um, with commas separating them. We'll copy that. And then inside quotes, we'll say RGB and then pass in in parentheses those values. Okay, let's go ahead and let's define our labels. I don't like how this is. There we go. That's more indented. All the same. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's say let labels equal this array. And so this is where we would say what each column is representing. So let's go back to McDonald's website and let's name off some burgers. I'm going to start with Big Mac and probably just pick a few at random. And then while we're at it, we can also start on the data array. So we could say let data equal this array. And so the first one, I'm going to say Big Mac. And then the data for that is just going to be the calorie count. So 550 calories. And then we'll just go like this. This is how I'm going to uh, add this data. So let's do another one quarter pounder. I can't spell with cheese. And this one apparently has 520 calories. Um, McDouble, which apparently has 400 calories. A double cheeseburger, which has 450 calories. And let's do one more. Let's just do a regular hamburger which has 250 calories. Oops, that's supposed to be a comma. There we go. So now the amount of labels should be one, two, three, four, five, and same with the amount of data. So each label now has their counterpart, which is the numerical data. So now that we have these made, let's go ahead and say labels, it's going to be the values of labels and data is going to be the values of data. However, I don't think it's going to like this because we have two datas. So now I'm going to actually rename this and call it item data. Let's say the data is equal to item data now. All right, so that's probably the hardest part is just getting your data in there, in my opinion. Um, now we just need to create our entire configuration of this chart. And this is how they do an example in the getting started of Chart.js, by the way, the actual site of Chart.js. They break it up like this, but if you wanted to, you could honestly just copy this and paste it right here. That's all we're doing, but I think this makes it a little easier to see instead of throwing everything in one single object. Um, maybe it'll make it a little easier to clean up if you want to add some data or whatever have you. But now let's go ahead and create our constant configuration, or we could say const config of this entire chart. And this is just another object. And one property we can say is type. So what kind of uh, chart type is this? This is a line chart. 
this is a donut chart. It's actually going to be, in our case, a bar chart. And then what's the data of this chart? And our data, as you could have guessed, is this data object that we defined. So now we have our chart, and now we just need to link this canvas to our chart, or our chart to this canvas. So now we can say constant chart is going to be equal to a new chart object. And the first parameter is the canvas that we're going to use to display this chart. So this canvas right here. So we can say document dot get element by ID and then throw in the name that we gave the ID. So my chart. And then next, what is the configuration of this chart? It's going to be this configuration object. And one thing I noticed I forgot to do with all these is put semicolons. So let me put semicolons after all of these. Like that. Okay, so I'll save this. I think this is everything that we need. So let's go ahead and let's reveal this in the file explorer and let's just open it in Chrome. If you don't see Chrome, you can just right click it and say open with and then Google Chrome or whatever web browser you want to open this with. So let's bring it over. This is what it now looks like. And what's kind of cool is it has these little tool tips. So if you hover over each individual bar, it'll show you the value, the color, which we can obviously see, and also the label that we gave this particular bar. Pretty neat. So one thing I want to show you real quick is maybe we want each individual bar to be a different color. So I'm going to go back to our color picker here and I'm going to grab this color right here. And what we'll end up doing is we'll be making an array of colors for each bar. So instead of one bar color for you know all of the bars, um, each one is going to have their own color. So RGB, and we'll pass in that new one I just got. And we need to do this three more times. So I'm going to pick three different colors. I'm not going to bore you with that and throw them in here. And then I'll meet you back once that's done. OK, so I added three more colors. Now we have five colors total. And so the first one, the Big Mac, is going to have this color. Quarter Pounder with cheese is going to have this color. McDouble is going to have this color, so on and so forth. And then if I go ahead and save and refresh in Chrome, now you can see each one has their own individual cover color that we gave it. Okay, and lastly, real quick in this video, I want to go ahead and get rid of this legend because right now I think this legend's completely useless. So I'm just going to set that display to false. And to do that, there's another property in our configuration called options. And that's going to take another object. And we're going to say the plugin property. So plugins, oops. I cannot type plugins, which is another object, and then <laughs> legend, which is another pro uh, object, and then display, we're going to set equal to false. Okay, so I'll save that, come over, refresh, and now our display for our legend is false, so we're no longer seeing that legend. And maybe there is one more thing actually we should do. We should also give this a title. So outside of our legend object and inside of our plugins, we're going to say title, a new object, display, we're going to set to true, and then text, what's the text of this title? Uh, calories, or maybe McDonald's burger, McDonald's. Oh, it doesn't like that. McDonald's, burger, calories. Maybe this should be a capital B. Okay, let's save that. We'll refresh it. And now we have McDonald's, burger, calorie title. And now we know what this data set is displaying. Because maybe before it was just blank and you're like, okay, well, what's 550? What's Big Mac? Now we know, oh, it's the calories of that burger. All right, so that's a quick little chart JS intro video and we made our first chart our first bar chart i hope to continue to make a few more videos on this at least to display different charts maybe different settings what if we want this title bigger what if we want the font to be different the color all that jazz um, but i wanted to make this a quick little intro video so if you enjoy it 
feel free to hit like and let me know. And uh, I hope to see you in the next chart videos.